Good afternoon. We will continue in our studies. As Christians are always studying. Thank you for coming sa mga pagula pong dumating. Salamat sa inyong pagdarlo at nawa. Ang salita ng Diyos ay magbigay ng kaunawaan sa atin upang kaunawaan natin ang nais ng Diyos sa ating mga buhay. I, I pray and I thank the Lord for every one of us to grow in faith through Christ. So last week, as I remember what you have discussed last week. So this is our second Friday for the March or for the topic, our, our theme theme for this month is suffering in, suffering in Christ. Are you happy about that thing? <laughs> Are we really a suffering freak church? Or are we really like to suffer? That is not what we mean. We mean to understand as Christians, we are in suffering. We are about to suffer. And there is glory in that suffering. And thank the Lord last week, I do believe the proper perspective of suffering and why Jesus suffered. Bakit si Cristo ay naghirap, pinahirapan. So I think, I believe that is the basic or the foundation of the suffering uh, to get away from suffering. So today, we will have some verses but we need to start directly about the source of suffering so the title of our preaching today is God's sovereignty in suffering ang suverenya ng Diyos sa mga paghihirap or ang sovereign na Diyos, ang suberinya ng Diyos sa mga kahirapan. Di ba ang ganda? There is a reality of suffering. But the good thing, the good news is, there is a real God, the real God who is sovereign above over every suffering. So are you ready? Handa na pang yeah, medyo alam ko na uh, nagustuhan natin we, we delighted our songs it it's really conveys the message of whom we believe how we believe the clarity of our songs speak what or oh, speak the clarity of what we believe my glory is in the redeemer if your glory is in yourself or in what you have, that's not, that's glory will fade. But when our glory is in the Lord Jesus Christ, that glory will be forever and ever and ever. Now, we'll go or we'll jump directly in the sources or where the source of suffering <coughs> ano po ba yung mga dahilan ng or pinagmumula na paghihirap sino po ba dito yung ayaw maghirap 
who are <coughs> here that they don't like to suffer. Right? Of course, I don't want to suffer. That's why you come here to not to suffer in our problem. Especially the acquired income deficiency syndrome. Correct? Right? <laughs> so we don't want to suffer financially. We don't want to suffer any suffering. That, that's why. But the Bible is clear about the teaching, the preaching about suffering. And even Jesus suffered. Now there are three points we need to look at about the sources of sufferings. There is the so-called natural evil. The second is the moral evil. The third is supernatural evil. So, dyan po yung ilan po yan sa mga kategory ng mga pinagmumula ng kahirapan or ng suffering. First, natural evil. We read our Bible, Genesis, and then our monthly reading is Genesis, and then next is Songs of Songs, then down to Nehemiah, Habakkuk and we'll jump to first and second Thessalonians but what about the, the Old Testament? Anyone can so Genesis, Song of Songs Nahum, Habakkuk and then Matthew first and second Thessalonians so I made my simple poem and post it in our WhatsApp, WhatsApp group so in Tagalog I don't know how you repress it, but there is a natural evil when people, when Adam deliberately sinned against God, he started cursing or judging the creation. Natural evil this is impersonal. This is external of us. This is not physical. And, it, and this is temporal. Natural evil, uh, this is the form of diseases, disasters, catastrophic, and etc. etc. Yan yung natural evil. All kinds that came from physical world, yun po ay tinatawag na natural evil. Diba? Bagyo, hurricane, what else? Earthquakes. Earthquakes. Volcanic eruption and there are more to come. More to come. This was the effect of God's curse of creation. From tiny bacteria to tidal waves, from viruses to volcanoes, eruption, our world is suffering as we can see. Nowadays, it keeps even growing, even we are sophisticated technology. We, even there is a sophistication of technology. Right? Before, when I was young, and I'm still young, <laughs> young at heart, nung ako ay bata pa, at ngayon ay bata na lang sa, sa puso, <laughs> sa tuho na hindi na. <laughs> I, just re I just heard our neighbor once was dead because of A heart stroke. That's what I know before. Now, heart stroke. Uh, so heart stroke. There is diabetic. There is 
o so many that is natural evil we people we try to escape from that natural evil in our country we live i live in northern samar that is the airport of typhoon there is about minimum six typhoons per year and the weaker typhoon it will and nowadays it becomes signal number two signal number two it is 80 to 120 kilometers per hour signal number two is 100 to 240 and if it is signal number four it's for 200 more that's why we have a yolanda hit in Tacloban city near to us we are from summer so that is the problem of natural evil sino ang pwedeng makatago rito who can hide for this natural evil nowadays there is a UN or sanctioned by UN about the climate change they are trying to solve this problem they are funding a lot of money, but what happened? <clears throat> Still, people are suffering because of a natural calamity. Now, let us look our Bible in, not in King James, in, in other version, because in King James, maybe we will be assaulted or pwede tayong sabihin na, Ah, see, God created evil. Now, if you look in King James, in first, uh, in Isaiah 45, verse 7, so just read in King James, but we will read it aloud in ESB or NASB. In Isaiah 45, verse 7, In King James it says, I have created evil. So I have hard time explaining for that. So we'll go to other version. I, I will read for you the ESV version. It says, Isaiah 45 verse 7, <clears throat> I form light and create darkness. I will make well being and create calamity. In King James, create evil. I am the Lord who does all these things. So natural evil, it, 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 there is a direct connection to sovereign God. <clears throat> and this is how God reminded us that there is a sovereign God. When we suffered the natural evil, we as Christians, we need to always look, think about that God is still merciful to remind us that there is a loving, gracious, merciful God. Mahinam po natin makita ito. So that is number one. Day by day, this natural evil cause us suffering not only us all over the world take note this coming june july august it will be a tremendous rainy season in asia and there will there will be a projected massive flood may april may vacation time there is a projected, projected so-called what? El Nino. La Nina will be in the rainy season. El Nino is tremendous, tremendous heat. Second, moral evil. Moral evil it is personal as contrast to the natural evil which is impersonal so ang ang natural evil ay outside of us 
Mo moral evil is inside within us or in us. Moral evil is spiritual. The Bible is clear about this. Moral evil is wickedness, sin, transgression, iniquity, or whatever term you want to call it. Yun po yung moral evil. Kaya sa ating mga Tagalog, itong klaseng taong to, napaka-immoral. It means, there is evil in his heart. Moral evil is in the heart. It is a disposition. Ito yung disposition po natin. It is our intention. This is the intention of every human heart. It is an attitude of human's heart and will. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 to 3, if we will look that verse... <coughs> Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 to 3 So anyone can read aloud clear and loud or I'll read it for you It says here And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked following the course of this world, fa following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desire of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the race of mankind. So moral evil is transgression. It is sin. This is all the people. There is a moral evil in our heart. If you are asking why this world is happening like this, bakit ba nagkakaganito ang mundo? Why the world is becoming really tough, unsafe to live, to live in. The world is the unsafe place to live on. Alam nyo ba yun, ang mundo ang isa sa pinaka hindi ay, ang, ang mundo ang pinaka mapanganib na tirahan. Alam nyo po yun? This is very dangerous to live the world because of the moral evil. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 uh, 12, Romans chapter 3 verse 12 and we'll just read this verse how moral evil in our heart, in your heart in every people in this world and even now the immorality is rampant. Why? Because it's become a standard of living and it, and it is become legis, uh, legally it is legislatively in the Congress it is in the law of the land now people are lovers of themselves because it is being be, uh, become, uh, it becomes law and it is imported to Philippines to other third world country. Let us look at uh, Romans chapter 3 verse 12. We'll start in verse 12. Or we'll start in verse 10. 3 verse 10 it says, As it is written, Nasusulat, No, uh, none is righteous. Walang matuwit. No not one. Wala kahit isa. No one understand. Walang nakakaintindi. No one seeks for God. Walang naghahanap sa Diyos. 
all have turned aside lahat tumalikot together they have become worthless silang lahat ay naging walang kwenta no one does good no not even one lahat ay walang gumawa ng mabuti lahat ay masama what does it mean of course we did some good thing Okay, gumagawa po tayo ng mga bagay na ma maganda. We do, we do good thing. But, back, back of that good thing, there is a bad thing we are doing. And that's why there is no community nowadays that there is the perfect community. Wala po ngayong lugar sa buong mundo. It's a perfect. It's a peaceful Paul is saying that we are not able to do perfect good because we are morally evil and that is the source of our suffering. For example, the doctor told us, you know, you need to start uh, losing your weight. Rather, you will lose your mind. What will do? Ah, oh, I like, I love to eat. <clears throat> The doctor said, you need to do this. And what we did? No, just forget what the doctor said. We are an evil. An evil. An evil. In Genesis chapter 6 verse 5, look at that. After the fall of man, we go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. So, just ilang chapter lamang what happened it says the Lord that is Yahweh or maybe in other translation Jehovah the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That is the condition of our heart. We try to plan good, but at the end we are thinking about bad or evil. That's why we suffer. The world is not suffering not because of natural evil only. It's because of moral evil. Psalms chapter 7 verse 4 to 14. Psalms chapter 7 verse 14 it says, Behold, the wicked man conceived evil and is pregnant with mischief and gives birth of lies. So yan po yung evil heart loving conceive evil his heart conceive evil and further we can see in the bible in James chapter 1 verse 15 tingnan po natin ito maigi we need to look at our heart our mind if it is happening like this then we need to come to the Lord then that means if there is moral evil in our heart, in our thoughts, we need a Savior. We need someone who can help us or else we will be dead because of sins. That is why we need the sovereign God. People are saying, I don't believe God. Okay, explain to me why you don't believe God. Yeah, because I don't see God. Well, okay, fine. But you know, I believe God. Because there is evil within me. And it is struggling. And it is giving me guiltiness. I really find, uh, I, I, I can find no rest when I am doing evil. James chapter 1 verse 15, it says, 
then desire that desire in other translation is lust then desires when has a uh, when it has conceived gives birth to sin and sin with its fully grown brings death we have a group in our messengers we called it baragat uh, it's uh, Baragat in our own dialect is uh, reunion. In English, is reunion. So we are planning to have a reunion with our classmate in high school. We graduated last 1991. So you have the hint. Uh, how old are we? <laughs> so we are. We put it uh, Baragat uh, 40 plus because we are 40 years old more. A little bit easy to remember. One guy, our classmate, last week dead. Siya ay namatay. And then one of our classmates asked, What happened to him? I said, hey, hey, hey. He is dead. <laughs> of course, his question is, What is the source why he is dead? And we come to know. That the reason why he is dead because his kidneys already failed. Why it failed? Not because of natural evil. It because of natural uh, moral evil. The doctor told him stop drinking wine. He never stopped until such time that he is dead. He stopped. <laughs> So don't be like him, brothers and sisters. Don't stop drinking when you are dead. <laughs> of course you will stop drinking. That's the effect of moral evil. Anyone likes to watch TV? YouTube? Now there are a franchise of American Idol. There is a franchise of Philippine got talent or American got talent or Australian got talent. I really amaze people how they are active but how they are morally evil. Now, even in got talent, they are clapping, they are saying, Ooh, yeah, that's good talent, even if it is immoral. And we are, by the way, being educated that this is just okay. This is just no problem. And we as Christians, we are enticed to, be, to laugh at them, to enjoy what, 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 the, what we have watched. But we need to be very careful as well. Maybe our moral uprightness is be, becoming tainted of this kind of so we need to look at that seriously that the next source of suffering anyone suffer of moral evil we have anguish we have emo emotional uh, distress we are confused for future we are not assured because we are so limited and our limited mind and heart could not comprehend the, the future of our life. But there is good news apart for that. Mayroong mabuting balita tungkol dyan sa mga problema na yan. If we miss the natural evil, we skip the super typhoon we don't have the very virus in our in our uh, body now maybe later we skip the catastrophe caused by hurricane or hurricane there is peace in this country there is no such super heat or heat stroke me we could we are not suffering for that but we are suffering moral evil moral evil within our heart 
that causes us to suffer. You know that suffering, it is a conflict. It is a fight. It is a chaos. Halimbawa, for example, why you are at ease? Why you are so confused? Why you feel you are guilty? Because there is an opos opos opposition. There is a contrast. You think this is good, but the other is you think there is something wrong. But thank the Lord. If we notice this kind of struggle, if we notice this kind of suffering, that means we need God. That means we need someone who can help us. That means we could not do it by our own, our own. We need a sovereign God. War broke up because of a constant struggle, conflict of opinions, conflict of position. You remember? And there is an imminent war coming, and there is progressive war because of uh, continuous struggle, continuous moral evil in their heart. That is the second source of suffering. The third one is supernatural evil. Ah! Takot na takot tayo na makakita ng aswang. Ah! We are so afraid to see a witch or a ghost. I have talked one guy, he's, a, he's, from, uh, sorry, he's from Uganda, I think. One day he will be with us here. So we are growing in numbers. Uh, the, the continent of Africa, the Lord is giving to us. And he said, you know, I don't like to, to call the Holy Spirit Holy Ghost. Because it looks like a Hollywood movie. It's so scary. Okay, good. Okay, call it the Holy Spirit. Supernatural evil. This evil is the leader is Satan with his demons or minions. The leader is powerful. He is not just simple as we think his demons are with power powerful than us if we escape natural evil then most probably we could not escape moral evil and if we could not escape the moral evil of course Satan will not will not uh, like the idea that he that you will leave behind. He will snatch you. He will make it sure that he, that you, that we, that they will be under his dominion. But praise the Lord. There is sovereign God who is powerful than supernatural evil, natural evil, even the moral evil. Supernatural evil, these are the fallen angels. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 14, this is the one third of angels, judge or fallen angels, they rebel against God. But they are unmatched with our sovereign God. Don't believe in your Facebook account on your Facebook wall that there is Jesus standing and trying to snatch you and the other guy uh, the, the Satan is trying to snatch you even and it is your choice if you will go to Jesus and if you will go to Satan no Satan is unmatched with our sovereign Jesus you believe that? that's the good news we are under the dominion of Satan, but thank to him, he gave his life for us that we will sit free. You remember the, the message last week? Isaiah chapter 53? 
He was butchered. He suffered for us to flee from that natural evil. Some people are saying, you know, Satan roaming around, going to the church and saying, Hey, Jesus, you know, these people are mine. Look at them, they are sleeping in the church. And Jesus said, no, they are just uh, lack of sleep. And he keeps on praying. It does not work like that, brother. <laughs> I know if you feel sleepy because you don't sleep well, maybe. And when you sleep in this church, you are allowed to sleep. That, that, don't just snore. So you could not <laughs> disturb others. But praise the Lord, you are not snoring. <laughs> you are not snoring. So these are falling. They are powerful. Ephesians chapter 12. Let us look at that verse. So there is reality. There is the real evil. If we keep on saying, no, I don't believe, then you are in a big trouble. There is the reality of evil. People nowadays, they are saying, no, just, just be strong in your mind. Don't, don't believe that. That is just the state of your mind. Ephesians chapter 6 verse start with 10. Paul said, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil for we do not wrestle for we do not fight, for we, we do not battle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. There is reality of evil. Or super supernatural evil. Are we still there? Sometimes you could not see him, but actually we enjoy we, we enjoy them before. Supernatural evil. They are in politics. They are in schools. They are in the church. A lot of churches nowadays they are preaching about differing Christ and sovereign God. They are always saying that do good. You can do it. We cannot do it unless the sovereign God will empower us, will call us, will strengthen us. There are a lot of a lot of churches nowadays. They are just saying you have the full potential. We don't have any potential to king conquer moral evil, even supernatural evil. But it is only the sovereign God. If you try to believe that you can go, then you don't need God. You don't look for a savior. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Let us read this verse. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. It says, Just hold on. Sabi po rito, In their case, the God, that is a small g-o-d, in, in their case, these are the people who don't believe God, these are the people who don't trust God in Christ. In their case, the God of this world that is referring to Satan and has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. See how Satan works? 
how he has power to blind you, blind us. But praise the Lord. God is so powerful that he opened our eyes. And I pray while I'm preaching this one, before I preach, even yesterday I took from praying, Lord, open our eyes. Remove the blind, the blindness Satan is giving to us. Open our eyes that we can see the glory of Christ. That we can see the sovereign God. We will not just listen our stubborn mind. We will not listen our feelings that we always want to sleep. Open our eyes, our mind, our hearts to understand what you want us. Because Satan is so powerful that we have no power unless God will cause us. Finally, evil will be punished. Finally, evil, there is no body of evil. You get you? You understand? Wala pong katawan, walang kaluluwa, walang espiritu, walang buhay ang evil. Evil is just a defection of righteousness. The best example of evil is dark. You know what I dark did? Dark time I am. Evil is when you miss the point. If we miss the standard, You get the point? <laughs> there is power in evil when someone acted, for example, the purpose of my eyeglasses is to wear like this. But when I start wearing like this, something wrong, that's evil. It does not, it does, does not care for you. Does not. But when I started using my sunglasses to punch you, that is more correct. So that's not. So maybe we will we will think why God allow evil. Now we think that how Satan he become an evil one in the presence of holy, holy, holy God. Maybe you ask like this question. It is tough. Why God allow this evil, this sin? You ask me. I don't know. Why God allowed that? But we can see why He allows it in a proper perspective of biblical writings. Finally, evil to wrap up Evil will be destroyed and confined or and will, will be jailed in hell. Hell is a place where people who does evil will be eternally punished. Day and night they are continuously what? Tormented. Evil people who does evil will never die in hell with worm who will eat them, who will bite them that never dies as well. Hell is where the evil people, people and Satan and his demons will be tormented or will be there forever. The fire that never be quenched. Ang apoy na kailanman ay hindi naubusan ng pag-apoy. God will obliterate evil after some time. And even now, 
He removes the evil in our heart. Now we'll go to our final plea, God sovereignty. This is the most loving for me. This is one of my favorite subjects, the sovereignty of God. We study it uh, little in our attributes of God. I just read for you. We'll go to Second Chronicles chapter 9, verse 11. Ah, sorry, First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 11. And we will start here. ESV it says, let us look at this together. It says here, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Wow! Ito yung magandang makita natin. After we are scared, I just remember one of our brothers. Can you please pray for me? Bakit po? Aking pamilya sa Pilipinas, my family in Philippines, I hope that they will not be killed. That someone will protect them. Because we don't like someone there is a typhoon coming. We keep on praying. But take note. Look at First Chronicle chapter 29, verse 11. Meditate on it. Look at, we'll read it again. Once again, we need to read it again. Look at, see? David says or declares, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are excited, exalted as head over all. Now, here we go, here we come. There is a sovereign God who is sitting at the throne of, in heaven. He is able to control what things is happening and what are the things to happen. He is the most powerful God that we can trust. That is the beauty of Christianism. That is the good news. In our time, sovereign or sovereignty of God is just not a primary topic of the church nowadays. In 18th century up to 19th century in England, how they progress because they know how or who is the sovereign God. Nowadays, a lot of Christians, they don't believe about the sovereignty of God. But when I experience natural evil, I told Lord, there must be God or else what happened to us? Ang tingnan niyo po yun? Paano na kung walang Diyos yung mga nangyayari katastrofe ngayon? Ganun na lang ba ang buhay? That's life? Why we value life? Why we fight for life? Because in our heart, in our mind, there is someone who cares for life. And that is who sits on the throne. He is the sovereign God. The sovereignty of God may be defined as the exercise of His supremacy. I just copy it from the attributes of God. Being infinitely elevated above the highest creature, He is the most high Lord of heaven and earth. You need to believe this. We need to believe this. Subject to no one. Influenced by none. Absolutely independent. God does as He pleases. 
only as he pleases always as he pleases none can thwart him none can hinder him no one give counsel to him he is the supreme god who is more above moral evil he is more above supernatural evil you are crying we are crying because of what because we have a delayed salary we have a big question my question before why my neighbor of three years old girl was raped devastated by a gang rape where is god how god allows all of this tough question right what happened to the Philippines? What happened to 6, 000, uh, 6 million Jews killed by Hitler? Where is God? When your mother, maybe your father dies, we keep on asking why they are dead. Did you read Genesis, by the way? God said to them, kill them all. Is God really loving to allow these things to happen? I could not answer all. But think about this. When a three years old, a three years old girl, or four years old girl, devastated, raped, and killed, that is the mercy of God. Before I could not understand. You know what? God allows that to happen because He does not want that these children to be more problematic after some time. That's the mercy of God. But those people who are died, adult, God has the right for them to kill them. Why? Because they are sinners. Because our intention is continually evil. Because we defect, we rebel against God. We have no time to hear His voice. We have no time to seek Him. We continuously saying, I can do by my own. If we are dead tomorrow, it is right for us to be dead. Because we are sinners. I hope you will understand that. The Bible is clear because of sin, people become dead. But thank you for the sovereign God. He pleases, it is pleasing to Him that you come to hear these words. He is the one who planned that you hear this voice. I know and I believe God is convicting you because He does not want you to be condemned, to be in hell. There is a time for you to ponder. Mayroong pong panahon para makita po natin ang mga katotohanan ito. There is a reality for us to realize. If you care really life, give it to Jesus. Come to Him. There is a reality of evil within us and outside of us. There is a sovereign Lord, a sovereign God. Because He is sovereign as He pleases, He gave His begotten Son. And Jesus suffered at the cross of Calvary for us to purchase from the dominion of Satan. That is the ultimate Suffering, Jesus suffered for us. In Daniel chapter 4, verse 35, let us look at this. Daniel chapter 4, verse 35. Caesar, in, in King James, he do it according to his will 
in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand. Wow! When you are struggling, when we are struggling of sin, of moral evil, there is nothing we can do but cry or but run to Christ. Flee to God. Have mercy on me, Lord. I keep on doing these things. You are more powerful than any evil. Help me. God will answer our prayer if we pray it humbly. Seek His face. Divine sovereignty means God is God. In fact, as well as in name, that He is on the throne of the universe, directing all things, working all things after the counsel of His own will. Let us conclude. In 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 15. 1 Timothy. And our application is Revelation chapter 21. <clears throat> So in 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 15 it says here which he will display at the proper time he who is the blessed and only sovereign the king of kings and the lord of lords after some time Jesus will display who is He as the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. If you know, brothers and sisters, you, need, you know that you are suffering because of the moral evil, the natural evil, and supernatural evil, there is a way you can out, come out for that. There is Jesus. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, while we are sinners, God demonstrated His love. He gave His, His Son for us as a ransom. Wow, that's the good news. Romans chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is everlasting life in Christ Jesus. There is a time we can es escape evil, demons, and that is the will of the sovereign God. If you think you need God, if you think you need Christ, if you think you need Him as your Lord and Savior, that means Jesus is working in your mind and your heart. If you are a Christian already and you want and you are still thirsty to grow because Jesus, His Holy Spirit, is keep on ministering you. He wants you. He wants us to enjoy with Him while we are here suffering. Look at Revelation chapter 21. Verse 1 to 6. Wow. Revelation chapters 21, verse 1 to 6. We'll just look at this chapter for our summary. Verse 1. This is John the Beloved, write it. You can rewrite, by the way, if you'd like. And ponder about it. Let's look at your Bible. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Wow, I'm excited. 
to, so, to see that, that new heaven and earth as well. For the first heaven and the first earth was passed away and the sea was no more. What is that? There is no sea. Sea is in their literature it is the illustration of problems. This is the illustration of unstableness. But John is saying there is no sea. There is no problem where? In heaven where we live with God. May problema ka ngayon dito? Do you have problem? Just enjoy it. Later on, we will have no problem throughout eternity in heaven with Christ. That's the blessed hope we have preached There is no evil there. Even you want it, God will not allow. And you could not think evil when you are dead. There is a fullness of joy, uh, Salmi said, in the presence of our Lord. Verse 2. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. Wow! Sino po yung nagbasa ng Genesis? Who read Genesis? There is a very good garden there. Where is that garden? We will see that garden with God. That will be restored after some time. God will be with us. You like evil? You live evil? You know why I keep on going away from evil? Not because just God empowered me. Yes, because He is empowering me. But because it is clear for me now that my life is my life is going to heaven with God. And I could not exchange the glory in my redeemer to the evil that I have now. Tindan niyo mo? Hindi ko pwedeng ipagpapalit ang aking ang kasalanan na mayroon sa akin ngayon doon sa mayroon na ko pagkatapos ng buhay na ito na kay Kristo. Kaya po lumalago tayo ang Kristiyano. Kaya po lumilinaw yung ating mga nadirim lang kaisipan. Our mind is becoming clear for the clear words of God. Verse 3. See that? He will be with us. God is with us today actually. But there the immediate presence of God. We can feel Him. We can see Him. Wow. And even I can see Brother Alex even he is at the one uh, kilometer away from me. Ah, this is Brother Alex. Because my eyes is no need for no need for eyeglasses. <clears throat> Verse 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and the day shall be no more. There shall be no mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. Wow. There is no natural evil. There is no moral evil. There is no supernatural evil to come to 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 come to heaven. You need Christ. Kailangan po nating siya sa atin ng ating isipan, ng ating damdam. Na kanino ba ako ngayon? I belong to who? Sinuko ko na ba ang buhay ko kay Kristo? If you know that you are a sinner, if you know that the sin is crouching in your heart, in your mind, there is only way to get out from that. Come to Jesus. If you understand what I'm preaching, that means Jesus is convicting your heart that you need Him. Yeah? That's the good news. 
That's why I saw it, eh? Ah, we can smile at the storm. Suffering, we can we can have joy despite of tremendous suffering because we are in Christ. We are assured. Where's fine? And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. Thank God. There is a sovereign God who sits on the throne. Sovereign God. Sovereign God. Who is powerful than natural evil and moral evil and moral evil and even supernatural. He is so very that He gave His begotten Son, Jesus, for us to be saved, for us to walk in a manner worthy in Christ. Let us pray. Father, thank You for Thy words. Thank You for You sit at the throne, reigning and ruling. Thank You for giving us your begotten Son, Jesus. Thank you that we realize that we are sinners. We are morally with evil. And we see the natural evil surrounds us. Even the supernatural evil, we could never understand how the satanic kingdom, see demons, devastating our world today we have no hope we have nothing we can we could we can go thank you that you step in because of your words you keep calling us to repent because of your words we understand we need Christ and He is our Lord and Savior. It will be that Thy sovereign words will give us understanding that our hearts ay suko po sa inyo. Our heart will submit to You. Thank You. This is all we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So,